Hello and welcome to tutorial 87 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list, then please go to markplex.com, that's markplex.com, and I will let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So in this tutorial, what I want to do is demonstrate how to make use of the update event for a price series provider. And what we're going to do is build on some of the work that we did in the last tutorial, but to go about getting the same end using a slightly different method, a slightly different way. And uh, what we're going to be doing, uh, as before, is calculating a half hourly or 30 minute moving average or exponential moving average on a five minute chart using a price series provider. I was asked last time by a few people uh, whether uh, you could use similar ways of doing this calculation with other things like, for example, ADX and uh, stochastics and so on. And the answer is, well, you could, but you would need to go about doing it in um, you'd need to think through exactly what was going on with a particular indicator or function. I'll probably be spending some time looking at some of those additional things such as ADX and stochastics in the next few weeks. But uh, for the moment, we're going to be looking again at the exponential moving average, not least because it's a somewhat more simple calculation. So what I've done, I've created the program already and you can see it applied to the chart here. And uh, you'll see that the historic calculations are shown in green and then those moving forward are shown here in uh, a yellow color. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that um, indeed the calculation, if we just look at the half hour, the 1500 for example, the uh, calculation there for the exponential moving average calculated using data two and that calculated using a price series provider with the five minute bars are the same. In fact, you probably can't see that because it's just at the bottom of the screen, but uh, just have to take my word for it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've deleted the program that I've written and uh, we're just gonna start again. Now, because this is gonna be using some things which are very similar to the previous program, what I'm gonna do is just copy into here the, uh, the program that we looked at last time and uh, then make some modifications to it. Okay, so I've copied the uh, program from the previous tutorial into here, that was tutorial 86. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just delete some things because we're gonna recreate the price series provider so that I can demonstrate the update event. So what I'm gonna do is just remove some of this stuff that refers to that and also, what I'm also going to do is give the moving average a different name of the exponential moving average. We're going to call it four in this case. And we're not going to be using this weight for the end of the bar anymore, so we can remove that. Okay, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be recreating the, the PSP so we can delete this for the moment. Just gonna leave that clear print login. And again, I'm gonna make that X average four last. And this we are gonna be using, what I'm gonna do is just comment this for the moment because uh, so that we don't get some errors happening. And uh, what I'm also gonna do is change this so that Instead of calculating X of three, we're going to be calculating X of four. So, like so. Okay. Okay, and then as I mentioned, we're not going to be using this weight for the end of the bar thing again, so we can safely delete that. Uh, we are going to be doing the similar plots. I'm just going to close that one because we don't have a PSP at the moment, except now, as I say, it's going to be X of four. And I'm going to make it green this time. So that's going to be basically the same. Okay, good. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is recreate our price series provider, just like we did before, very similar to the way we did that before. So again, we're going to click on the toolbox, 
going to double click on the price series provider make sure it's selected then go to properties i'm going to make a few small changes to the properties like we did before I'm going to make that exchange I'm going to call it p psp it's got its uh, easier name I'm going to make it uh, 30 minute bars and don't need that range we're going to set up in a moment symbol we're just going to type in symbol like so and I think that is probably everything for the moment now the thing that we we didn't do last time that we're going to do this time is we're going to click here which is our events and we want to create an updated event so what I'm going to do is just double click here and you'll see now that we've got a method appearing in our program for the PSP updated okay so as we did before what I'm going to do is look at my designer generated code which the program has created automatically and I'm going to copy this into the rest of my program you'll see now we have an event we didn't have an event before so I'm just going to put this into the place where the previous price series provider was which was in here like so okay so we need to do a little bit of tidying up here and what I'm going to do is declare some name spaces like we did before and I'm going to do that just by going to the top of the program and typing using then the name of the namespace and we're going to do that for a couple of others uh, TS market data okay now what we can do now that we've done that is if we have TS market data appearing we can delete it because the program already knows about it like so okay now the other thing we want to do is tell the program how many bars to load at the moment it's only got one bar we want to load as many as go back to the beginning of the chart and uh, the way we do that is dot uh, first date is equal to date time dot from well, let's just uh, go back and look at the dot operator okay it's not appearing from date and time date time and if you remember this will get the uh, the date and time of that very first bar and it will make the PSP range go back to that first bar okay so I think everything is good so far just going to remove some of these comments as I mentioned this is the event here at the bottom and because we've now copied this into the program uh, what we also are going to need to do is delete the PSP at the bottom but before we do that I just want to make sure that we've got everything from the designer generated code that we need to get um, we also need to create this variable so it's going to copy that and put that with the variables so we'll put it first needs to be a comma there now okay so let's uh, verify this and we're going to get an error and uh, the reason for that is because I have not deleted the PSP from the component tray but let's just do it anyway F3 and uh, you see there there's a potential problem so what I'm going to do I'm just going to click on that then press delete I'm going to click the little green um, thing again okay now you'll notice here we're getting a problem this is the reason why the dot operator wasn't appearing and that is because the program's thinking well what is date time if we copy that and go into the dictionary and we do a search you'll see that that is in the EL system namespace 
so we can use that so I'm just going to close that we can say using EL system like so so let's verify now should be okay and no, we've still got a problem here and uh, the reason is that I have misspelled that it should be from EL date and time I think I made the very same mistake before okay so we've got our PSP except now we've got this uh, this update event and what this does this in real time when this is uh, when the update event fires it tells us that the program has just something has changed within the PSP so we can now go back let's uh, reinstate some of this stuff and this is identical to what we had before in fact this is calculating the value of this moving average in uh, historically so we can also reinstate that and uh, what we could do at this point is just verify this and see what we get let's do that f3 we've got another error here and uh, that is because we're not using this weight for the end of the bar anymore I already deleted the variable so we can get rid of that f3 in our print log here we should change that to f4 f3 again and uh, looks like we're good so far so let's go to the chart and see if we're getting a calculation we are you can see that historically this has calculated and uh, if you look at those on the half hour on the 30 minutes you'll see that the values are actually the same between the calculation and the moving average, exponential moving average which is using data 2 okay so so far so good but what we also need to do now is do some real time calculation so what we're going to try and do now is we will use the uh, updated event to tell us when the end of the PSB bar occurs now this does not necessarily occur on the same tick as the last bar or rather the last tick of the five minute bar so what I found is that I needed to create another a variable and to make that a an intra bar persist variable and um, the uh, the way we're going to do that is I'm going to call it x av for last and then I'm going to call it rt for real time and I'm going to make it intra bar persist so we're going to use that in our calculation and uh, we only want to do this now the update this is firing off every time there's an update from that price series provider which is uh, very frequently so what we want to do is find out when it is the last uh, the end of that uh, PSP bar now if we uh, want to do that if we just right click here on args you'll see some of the information that we can find and uh, the one that we're interested in is reason and uh, if you look here you'll see the price series update reason for a list of the reasons and we're looking at bar close in other words a value of two so the we the the the, uh, the way that we write that we say if args dot reason and uh, should be able to see that somewhere here is equal to 2 then begin and this is where we're going to perform our calculation now the calculation is very similar to the one that we do lower down so what I'm going to do is just copy that and paste it up here like so the only difference being is that we want to use the RT value here rather than the uh, the other one and uh, what we need to do here is set that to be equal to XF4 after each time it is calculated
Okay, so let's verify that. Just make sure. Oh, and uh, one other thing we need to do is because we need to get an update of this when the last calculation in historic bars is taken, we also need to do that and store a value of x sub 4 so that when it hands over to the real time calculation, it's got the right value there. Okay, so I'm going to press F3 to verify this. Hopefully that's uh, good. And uh, we can now go and look at the chart. And uh, it certainly appears that uh, the historic calculation is performing correctly. But what we're going to do now is just let the program run for a little while and then we can compare values of the real time calculation. Okay, so we can see the next bar has formed now. What I'm going to do is just uh, move this up so we can see things a little more clearly. And uh, if we were to just move our mouse over the 15, 59 bar. In fact, let me just uh, move the screen to the right a little bit and then it's going to hover over the 1559 and you'll see there that the uh, the value of the AV is, uh, X, EXP which is calculated using the 30 minute bars on data 2 and then the XAV4 which is calculated using price series those two values are the same. So I will be making a copy of this program available for free to Goldpass members just uh, below this video and I uh, hope you find it useful.